the number one enemy that is holding you back from success, and that is you don't treat the fish, you treat the water. If you want to change, you want to improve your life, the first thing you have to be aware of is your surrounding. The more you give energy to something, the more you attract those things and those circumstances into your life. You know what, that five years, yes, I was working my face off. My friends, partying, drinking, chasing girls, all this bullshit. Guess where all my friends are now, they're broke. Top 10, top I got a top 10, top 10. Top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something greater inside you as well. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to change your environment, activate the law of attraction, and work smart with Dan Locke and my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume 17, to give you the confidence, belief, and motivation that you need. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Change your environment. Recently, one of my fish passed away and died. So I had the fish tank expert came into my house and I asked him, what happened? How come my fish died? And he said, well, you know, one of the fish is sick. And chances are there might be other, a few other fish that might be sick as well. And I was freaking out. I'm like, so what, what should I do? How, how do I fix this? How do I treat the fish? Do I give them like some medicine? Do I take them out and inject some needle? I have no idea how this works, right? He said, Dan, you don't, if a fish is sick, you don't treat the fish, you treat the water. See, today I want to share a very profound lesson with you. The number one enemy that is holding you back from success, and that is you don't treat the fish, you treat the water. If you want to change, you want to improve your life, the first thing you have to be aware of is your surrounding. Who do you surround yourself with? That's your water. You are the fish. You see, most people, when they attempt to make an improvement, they want to change their lives. They want to increase their income. They want to make more money. They want to be happier. But they want to change all of that without changing their environment. It's virtually impossible you're setting yourself up for failure because if you want to change, but the environment is toxic, the people you hang around, they're negative. The people around you, they don't believe in you. Or the, the workplace that you're working at, it's not suitable for your long-term goal. It's not where you want to be. Well, how are you going to get out of that? So the first thing you have to consider is your environment, your surrounding, not just physically, but also mentally, meaning the place you work your home office, the friends around you, who you spend time with. Now, does that mean, you may be asking me, Dan, does that mean that you asked me to move? What if I'm in a third world country? I do know a lot of my fans, they are from all over the world at this point, that you may be from different countries. So am I asking you to move? Yes, most likely, yes. Oh, but Dan, I can't move. You need to find a way. You need to get out of the environment. If you want to be successful, you first need to put yourself in a position to do so. You want to win. If you want to win a game first, you need to at least enter the game. Rule number two, activate the law of attraction. Have you seen the movie, The Secret? Or have you read the book, The Secret? Now, maybe you have heard of the law of attraction and you wonder exactly what it is and you wonder, does this actually work? Does the law of attraction work? You see, believe it or not, law of attraction is not some complicated magical ritual or some, some mysterious ancient secret. It's actually very, very simple. I want you to think of like gravity. It's an unchanging law of the universe, gravity. When I throw something in the air, it will drop to the ground. When you jump off a building, you will hit the ground. That's the law of gravity. You see, law of attraction is no different. It is simply the ability to attract into our lives whatever we are focusing on. 
in basic terms, all thoughts turn into things eventually, and what you focus on expands, just like gravity. To understand law of attraction, first you have to understand this, that you always attract into your life the people, the things, the resources, the ideas in harmony with your dominant thoughts. It means that you always attract people into your life in harmony with your current experience, knowledge, and wisdom. It means that your life only gets better when you get better. It means that as a salesperson, if you want to increase more sales, you want to close more deals, and you want to increase your income, you will only do that if you become better. You want to become a better manager. You will only become a better manager if you become better. You only become a better father only if you become better. Now, one time we were at the penthouse and it was raining outside, heavy, heavy rain. I was looking over the windows and I was looking out there. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, look at the dark cloud. Look at the pouring rain, like so depressing. And then Jenny walks by and she's looking at the windows and she's like, oh, it's so romantic. I'm like, romantic? Like, what are you talking about? Look at this, this is bad. Like, we can't go out. This is like pouring rain, damn Vancouver, right? She's like, no, look, look at the mountains. Look at, look at those, like, look at that. Look at the light and this is so romantic. I'm like, are you and I looking at the same thing? What is going on here? Well, we are looking at the same thing. The difference is that she saw beauty and I saw dark cloud. It is the same scenario. See what you focus on expands. It's like the filter I was talking about. Most people attempt to change their lives with more information without upgrading your filter. Jenny and I, we have a different filter. You see, you have to realize this that it is not what happens to you, but how you think about what happens to you that determines how you react and how you feel. It is not the world outside of you that dictates your circumstances or your conditions. It is the world inside of you that creates the conditions of your life. So you could choose, do you want to give it attention? Or do you not want to give it attention? When you go home, when you complain about your work, when you complain about your business, guess what? You go home, you complain to your spouse. Oh my God, today job, the work, the job is so bad, it's horrible. You are reliving that experience. You're giving it energy. Your brother-in-law, your brother, your sister calls you and you're, oh man, let me tell you about how horrible work is today. You will be living that again, you are giving it energy. Yes, it has already happened, but you can choose if you want to give energy to it. And that's how you activate the law of attraction. The more you give energy to something, the more you attract those things and those circumstances into your life. Rule number three, work smart. I never want to project my values on you. How you live your life is up to you. Right? I paid a price early, I made a lot of sacrifices. And money is not everything. Money is never everything, but money is important. It gives you more choices. So most people, they work hard their entire lives and they have nothing to show for. You work very hard. Comment below, right? You work hard. You cannot go on that vacation. You are in debt. You want to buy this something for your family. You want to send your kids to college. You want to just live in a nicer hotel when you travel, and you cannot even do that. Do you work hard? You work hard. I work hard. I always believe that if I'm going to be working hard anyway, I might as well work hard to be financially successful. I want to know that I'm working hard, but I'm also working smart, right? I want to constantly upgrade my skill sets so I can deliver more value to the marketplace and not just say, oh man, you're Dan, you work very hard. You know what, that five years, yes, I was working my face off. My friends, partying, drinking, chasing girls, all this bullshit. Guess where all my friends are now? They're Broke. They can't get a job. They're still stuck. They have no choices. They're in debt. They have no freedom. Looking back, I'm glad that I paid that price early. I'm glad I was working that 12, 14 hours a day, five years straight. 
no rest. Because I did that, I did what most people were not willing to do, what you are not willing to do. So now I could live a life that most people could never dream of. That's the difference. So you have to make a choice. By the way, you're already making a choice every day. You're making a choice right now. How you invest your time, how you spend your time. Before you know it, five years is gone. It goes by like that. 10 years is gone, 15 years is gone, 20 years is gone. You're sitting in your living room, you're watching TV, you're looking yourself in the mirror and you say, where the hell did my time go? Rule number four, be patient. I want you to think about in any area in life, it could be sports, it could be learning a language, it could be learning anything new. Mastery takes time, it takes years to achieve mastery. Now you can learn a skill in a relatively short period of time, but to accomplish mastery, it takes years. Anyone who has achieved mastery, it takes years. See, the question itself is, it tells me that, that the way that you're thinking about it is, where's the shortcut? How can I take the shortcut? And there's sometimes there are smarter ways to do something. There are some shortcuts, but it takes time, it takes effort, it takes patience, and it takes repetition to accomplish, to achieve mastery, right? And I believe the best way to do that is have a mentor. You think about how skills are passed along, how skills are passed down. I like to take a martial art example. If you want to learn, let's say, you want to learn Kung Fu, you want to learn Karate, you want to learn Taekwondo, you want to learn boxing, right? that the best way to learn is not just practice on your own, but to actually practice with other people, but having a mentor, having a coach, having an instructor to show you the ropes, to say, hey, here's, here, here's the fundamental, here's what you need to do, here's how you do it right, here's the move. Once, you, once he or she coaches you, it gives you feedback and you go out there and you practice this, do you do your own thing, right? And then come back to the dojo and you learn some more, right? And that's how you get good and, and how to get a black belt when you do it enough. When you do the same punch again and again and again, thousands of times, same kick thousands of times and that's how you get to mastery, right? So it takes years, it takes repetition. That's why most people don't accomplish, don't achieve mastery. That there are very few true masters in the world in anything because most people are not willing to put in the work. They say, hey, how can I get there in six months? How could I get there, in, get there in one year? When most of the time it takes decades. Also, if you wanna have more self-love and confidence, check out my 254 series, they're free. The links to join are in the description below. So that's a problem with young people. You're not good at anything. Oh, I'm so good. No, tell me the truth. You're not good at anything. After you practice martial art, you develop this natural self-confidence. Not cockiness, but you develop this natural self-confidence. Remember this, your business is always a reflection of you. Rule number five, learn to become grateful. When I was younger, I actually didn't understand the word gratitude. I didn't even use the word. It wasn't in my day-to-day -day vocabulary. And definitely, if it's not in my vocabulary, I'm not experiencing gratitude. I don't know what it means to be to be grateful. I understand like happiness and being a such a an achiever and a kind of type A personality. I was achieving and I was striving and I didn't understand no matter how much I've accomplished, no matter how much I have achieved, there's always this this satisfaction that is never enough. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. You set a goal, maybe in school you want to get to certain grades, right? You want to get A and you get A and you want to be, you know, the top student in your class and you do that. You want to be the top athlete and whatever sports that you play and you do that and, and you get there and somehow it just this kind of a dissatisfaction, almost like an emptiness inside. And I didn't know that we actually need to learn to be grateful. Uh, it's until much later part of my life that I learned, hey, you know what? Gratitude is actually an emotion that most people uh, don't experience. It's something a lot of people crave for. Now, although they might think they want to 
just be happy, and happiness is important, but I think most people actually craving for, they're craving for gratitude. It is a deep sense of joy that's unlike any feelings that you experience. And it's something that you have to work on. Unfortunately, most people, they don't experience gratitude naturally. Most people are a little bit negative. Think about the people around you, right? They are usually complaining, bitching, about whatever that they are complaining about. And they don't appreciate and they're not grateful for what they already have. And I'm not saying that you don't strive for more, but what I'm saying is we need to learn how to be grateful and appreciate what we have today. Rule number six, do the opposite. Most people, they live a life of mediocrity, meaning that most people actually don't know what they're doing. So if you don't have a positive role model in your life, guess what you could do? Just look at what other people are doing in your industry. Let's say you're in sales. Look at what most sales people do, and then what do you do? You do the opposite. So find out what they're doing right now, observe their behaviors, and then do the opposite. Let's say you're working in a, in a car dealership right now, hypothetically, and you look at what most people do in the car dealership. Maybe they spend a lot of time chit-chatting near the, the, the water cooler, right? Or they gossip a lot, or they come across too salesy and, and use a lot of techniques and really stupid, outdated techniques to manipulate the customer. Well, guess what? Look at those, study those, and then you do the opposite. If you just do that, you will stand out. The way they talk a certain way, do the opposite. The way they greet a the customer this way, you do the opposite. The way they treat customer this way, you do the opposite. Rule number seven, take responsibility. Very first key, the very first thing you have to understand about success is, number one, you need to take personal responsibility. You notice if you've watched a lot of my other videos, now I have over a thousand videos uh, on YouTube, the core theme, the, the core message the key thing that I'm always emphasizing is taking 100 responsibility for your own life. That if there's something wrong, it is my fault. If I'm not having the success that I want, it is my fault. If I'm not making the income that I want, it is my fault. If my life is not fulfilled, it is my fault. If I'm not living up to my potential, it is my fault. Fault. It is only when you take back the responsibility, when you own it, it is only when you could do that, that you could have and unleash the power to change and to pivot. Which you think about most people, they point fingers, right? When you point a finger, one finger points to other people, three fingers are pointing to yourself. And that's the most difficult thing. So if you want more success, you don't want more responsibilities. It's the other way around. You're not gonna have more success if you don't have a lot of responsibilities. Rule number eight, use adversity to your strength. One of the worst thing, but also the greatest thing that ever happened to me is when I was 16, my mom and dad got divorced. And when I was 17, my dad went bankrupt. If my dad didn't go bankrupt, because you no, know, I have allowance coming in. I wasn't thinking about money, wasn't thinking about becoming successful. But because of that happened, it forced me to do that. Not pleasant, right? It's, I don't recommend it for everybody, but it was one of the, the greatest things that ever happened. That was a turning point for me. It's like that adversity that helps you. Yeah. Rule number nine, believe in what you do. I believe that when you truly believe in what you do, it is your job to get it out there. It is your duty, it's your obligation to put yourself out there, to push your brand, to push your product out there, right? I'm gonna sell them something that they don't even know that they need, and by the time I am done, they're gonna say, thank you. That's the conviction I have. I have no problem. I'm constantly promoting, I'm constantly pushing, I'm constantly closing every single day because I believe in what I do. The question is, do you believe in what you do? And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is make sacrifices. Most people, they do not succeed in their late 20s. If you're by, you say research by meaning like you see people on, on Instagram or on Facebook and they succeed in the late 20s, 
that's there's that's not research. That's you're guessing, and that's what they want you to see. Uh, the people that I study, the truly successful people, most of them succeed by the late 40s. In some cases, late 50s, not late 20s. The successful entrepreneurs that I know that I've had the privilege of. Sitting down and interviewing through my Dan Lok show. Maybe you already know that on my podcast that I interview heavy hitters, billionaires, and multi-millionaires, and I sit down with them, I interview them, and I pick their brains. Right, I bring you the best insights. Most of most entrepreneurs, they don't succeed. They don't succeed in years. They succeed in decades. Decades, and people see that as oh, it is an overnight success. It's not. That's not an overnight success, right? Like people see what I do. Oh, I'm an overnight success. Give me a break, right? It's like a 10-year overnight success. The the sacrifice you have to make, the, the the price that you have to pay. No one talks about it. You only see the the fruit of the labor. You see the the glam. You see the glitz. You see the glory. You don't see the blood, sweat, and tears. The nights that you couldn't sleep, the vendors that are calling you,、uh, the payroll that you couldn't make, the debt that you got into, the sale you couldn't close, the failures that you have, the bad business partnership, the losses that you have—all this BS, right? That's the price. But most people don't see a lot of that. Now I have a special bonus tip from Dan on how to have self-awareness that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three-point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one: What are three things that you are grateful for today? Number two: What's one big environment shift that you need to make? And number three: Where do you need to work smarter? And if you like this video and promise to take action after watching it, we don't just watch videos here; we do something about it. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments. Use that as a promise to yourself, and then go take action. Just because someone is making money with an Amazon business, does that mean you should start an Amazon business? No, hell no, right? Does that mean that someone is making money in real estate that you should start a real estate business? Not necessary. You have to always. Know yourself. That goes back to self-aware, right? Being self-aware, self-awareness. So don't jump into something because you see someone else making money with it. You have to know yourself and say, "Hey, is this the right thing for me?" Hi, this is Dan Lok. If you're a fan of Evan's work, if you want to know exactly how to model my success, I want to invite you to join me for a special online training. All you have to do is click on the link below. You can join me for absolutely no charge. So click on the link below, and I will see you in class. If you want to see the top ten I did on Robert Kiyosaki, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. The last thing I want to talk about debt is one of the best investments I made because I started off with no money, like most people. You know, my first investment was a little eighteen thousand dollar condo.